So here's an update on where we are with the paint stripping and the painting. So you already saw how I stripped the paint using uh, brake fluid. And although I went over it with uh, an abrasive pad and steel wool, I did the same thing with this one. I did it off camera uh, because it just took so long. Um, basically, I'm not too worried about what's left on the bottom because you're not going to see this. And after primer, we're going to be painting it black. And again, you're not going to see it, so it's going to be hard to not notice. But it's really hard to take all this paint out of these little tiny ridges everywhere. So I just left it as is. Same here. This is going to be a flat black. Um, took off as much as possible, went over it with a toothpick <laughs> after the abrasive pad and steel wool. But you know, it's just really hard to get into some of these nicks and crannies. Um, again, I'm not worried about it. Uh, once we spray it with primer and then uh, we sand it down and then we hit it with a coat of flat black, the flat black is going to make some of this stuff highly unnoticeable. So uh, I'm not worried about it. Um, there was a lot of imperfections. It usually comes out when you sandblast a, a car. Um, here, it usually comes out when, when you strip the paint. Um, this was all really rough, and I think what happened is some of the glue that was used here had seeped down. So a lot of this needed to be sanded down. Um, there were some inconsistencies up here on the roof that I had to sand down. Um, at first I thought it was cracked, but really what it was is um, they're uniform, so I just think that they're just mold, um, um, just just little mold imperfections. So um, from the molding, so I basically sanded that down smooth. So, anyways, this for the most part is ready for primer, um, and I'm not worried about any little pieces that it covers. So as you can see, this has already been primered. And it came out really nice. I just need to go over it with some steel wool, um, smooth it out. And mm, don't think I'll put another coat. I'm just going to go right straight into the the color I'm going to I'm going to spray it with. And that color is going to be mica blue. So anything that it didn't quite get into these little crevices that still have a little blue, bit of blue paint from the previous, I'm not worried about because. The, uh, the final is going to be a mica blue, so um, you won't really be able to tell any of the imperfections. But came out really nice. You can tell it's an old school vintage body because it actually has, you know, the logo um, embossed on the side here. The new ones don't. Um, so, um, yeah, so we're ready to basically steel wool that and almost ready for paint. Uh, the other th only other thing I wanted to point out here is um, the there is a supposed to be a tab here and it broke um, yeah, I don't know if it was already on its way out um, or if the motor oil softened it enough to where it was just easily broken um, but I barely tapped it and just kind of broke off so we'll just super glue that you know that back on no big deal um, you know it's all it does is just hold a hold the top piece of the body in place but it's not really even necessary um, because this has these little ridges here I may not I may not even put it on I'll just see how it goes with these little ridges but it basically just holds the body tight and then the last is we already got the front um, the front face plate uh, painted um, so we primered it and painted it a metallic gray. We're going to paint the rear bumper and the front bumper and the side nerf bars uh, um, a metallic gray. Um, I think that'll really go nicely with the um, with the mica blue once we got that. So this is this is going to be sweet. It's just about um, just about done at least with the body. Um, ordered the reproduction windows and in reproduction interior for it. Actually, it's not repro. The windows repro, but the uh, interior, I believe, is off of the re the, the, the recently re-released -re um, bruiser. So anyways, that's the update. We'll get this thing primed, get this thing cleaned up. Um, and so the next time you see this, um, I'll just show you the final two prime pieces um, completely ready for paint, and then we'll go from there. Well, now that we have 
both body parts primed, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to put the first coat of mica blue. Um, ultimately, we'll end up painting the bed flat black. We'll ultimately mask off the back side of this and paint it uh, a metal or a, a gunmetal gray of some sort. Uh, and then we'll detail the windows and stuff. But first is first, uh, mica blue. Um, we'll blacken the underneath the body. Again, mica blue. Uh, we'll blacken the underneath. The inside of the cab will be mica blue as well, so it matches. Uh, we put the tab back on. Um, we reinforced it, and so it's not. It's it's super glue, but I'm gonna. I'm going to show you what I use um, to do that because super glue only goes so far. Um, when I have stuff like this that I need to glue and it needs to be strong, the problem with super glue is it takes a while to set and even then if there's gaps it's still loose. I use, and I'm not paid for this, um, but this product is insanely awesome. Uh, you basically uh, dab on some of the super glue and then you spray a little tiny bit of this insta set and it immediately just hardens and this thing is strong as a rock it is not unless I break it off this thing is not coming off um, and just basically reinforced it on the bottom I've used super glue with baking powder or baking soda or whatever um, you know the baking soda absorbs the, the super glue and it sets in and hardens but uh, that doesn't even compare to, to this stuff. So, uh, the Bob Smith Industries, um, it Maxi Cure and Instaset, um, amazing combination. I, I just can't say enough good things about that. And uh, here's what we're going with. We're going to go with the uh, Tamiya TS50 uh, Mica Blue. So, I'll give you another update once we get this painted. Let's see where we go from here. All right, well, you saw where we started from cleaning the body with and taking the old paint off with motor oil. Um, after priming it and painting it, this is the mica blue. This is what we came up with. So what I'm going to do today is start masking off and painting the, uh, the details. Actually, we're going to mask off and start painting the bed. We're going to paint the bed flat black. Um, but that's the front grill. We've got the bottom. We've got the little apron in the middle here painted. We've got the bumpers painted. And these are vintage original. I know they look, they just seem a little softer than the reissues. And I want to be able to say, Outside of maybe the windshield, um, I want to be able to say that everything on this build is vintage. There's no reproduction parts. So we got all this, all this the Nerf bars and the bumpers and everything painted already. So what we're going to do here, we're going to paint this bed flat black. That'll also help take away a lot of the uh, um, I don't know, a lot of the imperfections. I'm also going to paint the louvers. We'll mask this off and paint this flat black along with the little side uh, port windows um, here as well. So let's get started with that. I think um, I'm going to leave this top lip blue. So I'm just going to paint the inside. And We're going to stick with just going up to the edge there. So in this blue painter's tape, we'll mask off a perfectly straight line here on the bottom. And then I'll come back and mask off the rear window a bit. We'll do the bed first.
there's a clear coat already on this so if there's a mistake a little bit of overspray or whatever it should be easy to take off but let's try to avoid that So got all that masked and we're just about one more time just to make sure that this is all laid down well. So now what do I do is I take saran wrap and that's how I'll basically cover the rest of the body with saran wrap. Everybody has their own style of doing things. But that's, this is how I do it, so. Okay, so you get the idea. So I'll cover the rest of this stuff up and uh, I'll get to painting this and I'll be back to show you how that turned out. So stay tuned. Okay, so we finished painting this, the bed anyways. We still have the louvers and, and the details, but I wanted to at least show you what we've got so far here. And then I'm gonna also give you a little bit of feedback on the paint that I used. Because I started out painting it with to me is flat black paint. But I didn't like the way that it turned out. So let me show you what I switched over to. This is the final product here. I'll give you one more update once I get the louvers painted and then I'm gonna show you how I do some of the detail, um, the detail painting like, like the little uh, badge on the sides and you know. Um, also we're gonna detail the, uh, the logo the Toyota logo on the front grill. But let me tell you about the paint. So I started off doing the flat black with uh, the Tamiya uh, matte black TS6. I didn't like the way it turned out because it just didn't seem like a rough enough texture for some odd reason. I, 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 don't, I don't know. Maybe it's just the paint this time that I got because usually it has a little rough texture feel to it. So what I ended up doing after I painted it with the Tamiya, I gave it another coat, but I gave it a coat of uh, the Rust-Oleum 
um, flat black uh, paint. Um, it, it just seems to have just a nicer texture to it. I don't know. Maybe it's psychological. Maybe it's just me, but that's what I ended up doing. So that's how the rear ended up. So again, going back to the original video, what I dumped in the, uh, what I dunked into the oil to where it's heading towards now, um, it's almost night and day. So we just got the fine details, so I'll give you an update on, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and paint these off camera. I don't think I need to waste your time with that, but, um, I'll show you how I paint some of these details, um, such as the badging, um, without getting paint all over the place. And let's see if we can make it happen on the first try. So stay tuned. Okay. So before I get back to the body, I want to show you how I paint some of the detail on here. So I want to paint the Toyota badge here and with that badge, basically I want to paint a red outline around the logo and then the high points of the logo and the letters are going to be a silver metallic. So you could probably get away with using um, a fine point, uh, a super fine point marker, you know, like this to paint the letters um, because they are sticking up high enough and they're thin enough. Um, to where you're not going to be coloring in anything and that's usually where this stuff kind of falls apart is when you start coloring in you know a lot of the broad um, spaces um, but i'm going to show you a few other ways um, one of them is using the eraser um, of a pencil and basically you basically dip it in the paint wipe a little bit of paint off so you don't have a lot of runny paint and then you basically tap, you know, or swipe a little bit along the logo, the, the, the part that's sticking up. Um, so that's another way to do it. Another way to do it is with a very, very fine brush. And that's how I'm going to do the red part. I'm going to paint the red part with this because there's a lot of little crevices in it. Um, it'll just be, easy, be easier for the brush to get to. And then the other way is, um, well, you can always dab it, <laughs> dab the paint with a toothpick. Um, and then the other way is kind of like a dry paint. You know, you basically put your brush in the paint, take a lot of the paint off. So there's just a little tiny thin layer um, that's not runny. And then you just basically kind of feather it on to the letters and you just do that for a little while and the feathering just gets a a little bit more um, coverage little by little and then you'll end up having you know um, nicely painted emblems so those are the various ways um, I'm going to start by just painting the red around that logo now because I'm old <laughs> um, I use one of these guys to get my eyes focused in on the detail and this has a little magnification on it. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to, I don't want the red paint to go all over the place. So I'm just going to put a little bit of tape on here. And then we'll paint this side and then we'll take the tape off. There we go. And then you'll just paint the red first and then We'll go over the paint with the silver. Get this this thing open here. Make sure that's a good red. Paint's been sitting for a little while, so I want to make sure that it's still a nice bright consistency to it. Okay. I'm 
don't I don't go overboard with one coat so just put a little thin coat on it just let it dry and then just come back with another coat otherwise you'll just have a glob of red runny paint everywhere okay so we'll just let that sit for a little bit and let that dry and then we'll come back to it okay so I finished painting the red on the logo here so what we're going to do now is put the silver in um, I could use this chrome paint but I think what I'm going to do instead I have these metallic uh, sharpies and these things are sticking out so nicely that this should be easy even for you know the nine non fine tip um, it should be easy to to paint up so let's just start start with the far letter here and I'm not pressing down too hard I'm just doing it very lightly and it's kind of hard to see the silver it's there but it's you know because this has a metallic gray paint on it with silver flakes um, the silver is not going to have enough contrast to stick out too much but it is what it is all right so then we get the Toyota part all laid out so let's see We got the Toyota part laid out. Now we're just gonna get the highlight on the red emblem there. I don't know if this paint is, the red paint is dry enough or not, maybe. I'm just going to have to dot a little bit of red um, where I went over with some of the silver, but that can be done with a toothpick. So let's see what we got so far. So there's your logo. Okay. So the next thing is the detail on the side of the cab. So we'll let this dry and then we'll just clean up that little red piece of that logo in a little bit. But for the cab, we've got this logo here. So what we're going to do with this though is use the eraser because it sticks out, but it doesn't stick out a whole lot, especially here. Um, so let's do the eraser bit and see how that works out for us because a lot of these lettering is kind of flowing together and I'm afraid you're not going to be able to make out a whole heck of a lot of it so let's see what we're going to do here okay okay so in the end I went back the paint with the eraser is fine for small stuff, but I actually went back with with the Sharpie and, um, and colored in some of the missing little tiny pieces. Um, so I finished up the side that we did with the eraser with the Sharpie and just touched it up. And you can see it's, it's pretty nice. You can make out the Hilux four-wheel drive. The other side I did purely with the Sharpie. Um, and you can see that it didn't end up all that much different, probably even better. Um, so, you know, it's hit and miss with some of this stuff. Um, you can see Hilux four-wheel drive clearly. 
So I think I'm probably going to just stick with the Sharpie for doing the rest of the details. Um, I'll probably do the the, the door handles um, on the uh, on the bed. I'll do the the hinges back here. Um, the latches, the hinges. Um, so I'm going to wrap this up and um, put this all back together again. I still have to do the interior, which is just a little bit of painting. Um, but I'll show you when that's done. And then we'll get all this together and just wrap up this project once and for all. We've been at it for a little while now and I think it's time. Time to move on. So stick with it. I'll be right back and uh, we'll go from there.